Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome to the start of our Erebus in-depth tutorial series. Uh, so I mentioned a while back that I wanted to cover uh, the Erebus in-depth because there's a lot of things I think that are often overlooked with the Erebus that just aren't used or maybe aren't realized that they're there, so I want to cover all of that. Now, as per usual, we're going to start off with just a general look at the dimension, going through the different biomes, and talking about how to get to the dimension. So, to get to the dimension, uh, there's a few things that you're going to need to do. The very first thing is you're going to have to craft yourself an offering altar. Um, and this is all default recipes, but of course, depending on your pack, this may be different. Um, and then you're also going to need to craft a Gaian Keystone, and you're going to have to craft the Staff of Gaia. Now, to actually craft the Staff of Gaia, you'll notice that you need a Gaian Gem. And to get this, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to take this Offering Altar that we made. And let's see if I get this from memory, um, because I'm used to it being a bit different at this point. If we throw a Diamond on there, an Emerald, and a piece of Obsidian, you'll notice they start coming together. And they are, if we give them just a second, they're going to kind of spin around and do this thing. Uh, but after a little bit, they're going to combine and create our Gaian gemstone. There we go. And then we're going to shift right click, take that off. There's our Gaian gem. So once you have that, you can make your Staff of Gaia. Now I do suggest before you go into the Erebus that you make a second one. Just make a second Staff of Gaia. Uh, because you're going to need one on the other side of the portal in order to get back. So obsidian, emerald, uh, diamond, not expensive um, because you know it doesn't consume the offering altar. So go ahead, I do suggest that you go ahead and just make yourself another one. Now to actually make the portal, what you're going to do is you're going to build yourself out a frame of stone bricks. And inside of this, you're going to put leaves. Now, the actual shape of this doesn't really matter. You're going to notice that if I put down the guy in Keystone, I place that down, it's going to open a portal. Let's pull this off real quick. Now, let's mix it up a little bit. Let's do something weird like this. And we'll go ahead and put our leaves in now. Replace this. There we go. You'll notice that you can have a bit of freedom uh, with the actual shape for the Erebus portal. So I'm not going to worry too much about the exact dimensions. Um, it's pretty open-ended. There was a time when it was a bit more exact and there was like a little structure you had to build. That's not really the case anymore. You can pretty much uh, just have a bit of fun with it and do, you know, whatever um, that you may want to do. Also, any kind of leaves will work fine. It doesn't have to be oak leaves. Um, but as soon as you're ready, of course, just step into the portal and you're going to get teleported through. Now, this is the portal that I actually had uh, set up to set my waypoints uh, to make traveling around for this episode a bit faster. But uh, like I said, there will not be a Staff of Guy already placed in this keystone. So make sure and bring a second one if you want a portal back home, if you don't have another way to teleport back. Um, if you don't bring one and don't really fret, you can get diamonds, emeralds, obsidian, unless things are changed in the pack that you're playing, you'll be able to get those materials as well as the stuff to make um, your Staff of Gaia while inside of the Erebus. Um, it's just you're not going to be able to get back easily unless you bring that other that other staff with you. So the first biome is the one that we actually spawned into, and that is the underground jungle. Um, and you're going to notice it's kind of like a jungle, right? You're going to see uh, jungle trees and vines and stuff everywhere, plants hanging down. It's a very vibrant biome. Um, it can be a little bit dangerous, but it's not really one of the... Um, one of the more dangerous biomes um, on the list. You will notice occasionally that there are these little structures. These are wasp nests and they will spawn wasps, which can be a little bit dangerous because they do swarm you um, and they do a decent amount of damage. Um, but overall, not too bad. Um, also, when you're in this biome, do be aware of, um, let me find an example here. Do be aware of this right here. This is quicksand. If you land in this, you're going to start sinking, as you might expect. Um, you can make your way out, and of course you can break this stuff while you're sinking and break your way out, but it can uh, be a bit dangerous because, of course, if you do sink down low enough, you will start suffocating. Um, also, if mobs are chasing you, of course, that's never good because you're going to be stuck in that, and it's going to be a bit of a headache 
to get out of. Um, also, you'll see some different trees. I'm not going to be going over every individual tree and where to find them uh, within the Erebus. They're pretty, um, all the trees are pretty common, so it's not really something, if you go to each biome, you're probably going to find the trees. Um, there's not any that are overly rare, and there's not too much as far as special things that we need to cover for most of the trees, so um, I'm not going to be covering all of those. Also, all the different mobs, I'm not going to be covering um, every single mob. There will be some that we cover, especially ones that are related to taming. Um, but the Erebus is absolutely jam-packed, as you can see from the spawn eggs. The Erebus is absolutely jam-packed uh, with a variety of insects and arachnids uh, to be finding um, and to be battling. So um, there's generally a wide variety um, in each biome, 10 to 15 usually, uh, different ones that can spawn. There is also um, some mini bosses and special kind of rare spawns uh, that spawn as well as named creatures which we'll talk about in a later episode. Um, there are some plants that can be found within this biome that are a little bit more unique but we'll talk about those in more of a plant focused episode. This is just kind of a general first look overview of all the different biomes and stuff within the dimension. Now next up we have the subterranean savanna biome. Uh, which is this right here you'll notice the different color of grass as we move into this biome i mean this is very um you know basically reminiscent of a savanna biome um, you will notice a few things as you run around this area you will notice locust spawners which spawn locusts these guys are a bit dangerous do be aware before you go up near these because they do have a fairly large health pool they do hit pretty hard and uh, they can be a general nuisance um, especially if you're trying to get to the spawner because it can pump out three or four mobs uh, each spawner rotation uh, so just a heads up there you will notice these block of bones do keep these in mind we're going to talk a bit more about these a little bit later on but do note that these are going to spawn around the spawners and kind of act as the treasure uh, for the spawner so um, also within the savannah this fan is pretty straightforward you'll notice a bit of hilly terrain that's pretty common um, or kind of wild terrain it's pretty common within this biome. Um, I do suggest you also watch out for these guys right here. These are scorpions. They hit pretty hard. Um, and they are pretty common. Um, you also know some tarantulas. Also, the subterranean savanna is going to be the location for one of the three main bosses uh, within the Erebus. And that is the tarantula broodmother. We're going to talk a bit more about her later on. But just know that she will spawn within this dimension. She will spawn inside of... Uh, giant trees. So altogether a pretty straightforward uh, biome. Um, nothing too crazy here. Uh, just be aware that those spawners do exist and that you can find bosses within this uh, this biome. Now next up we're going to pop over to the volcanic desert biome. This biome is home to the second of the three uh, primary bosses um, which is this right here, this large structure, this pyramid um, we're going to talk a bit more about this, but it only spawns within this biome. It does have four mini bosses, um, as you can see on the screen uh, from the health bars, but uh, they're really nothing too crazy. But we'll talk about those a bit more. You'll also notice a plethora of prickly pear cactuses that spawn here. We'll talk a bit more about these in a later episode, um, alongside some of the other plants that can, that can spawn within the Erebus. Um, you will also notice a overall lack of really any kind of flora um, aside from those you will see scorched wood that's going to be about your only tree type that spawns here uh, there's a couple mobs to kind of beware of because you're going to notice a lot of lava traversing this can be a nightmare and there's a couple of really bad mobs first up lava web spiders these things are nasty and as an example just to show you we'll give it a second to uh, notice me here he comes You'll notice that he shoots fire at you. Oh, mantis. <laughs> um, he shoots fire at you and actually does a fairly decent amount of damage. I am wearing kind of one of the top tier armors uh, at the moment from the Erebus, which is the reinforced exoskeleton. We'll talk a bit more about that a, a little bit later on, but. Uh, they may not cause you too much trouble, but I tend to hate these things. 
um, because they are a bit dangerous. Now the other mob to watch out for, you'll see these guys spawning fairly regularly. Right here, these guys are right here. These are solar fusions. And when you kill these guys off, you'll notice that they spew out babies. And these guys are actually extremely fast. Um, as you can see, if they're coming after you, they can book it across kind of this flat terrain and they'll pretty much dodge just about anything to get to you, making them kind of kind of more difficult than most mobs to trap in, say, a hole or something like that um, because they are pretty intelligent. So I do suggest you watch out for them. They tend to spawn in packs, thus then bursting into four babies so you can quickly get overwhelmed by these guys. And you will notice a general theme of being immune uh, to lava with a lot of the mobs that spawn uh, within this biome. Also, one thing to note when you're going through the desert, there is a chance. And you wanna be careful when you're going through here because you can fall into these holes. And uh, I know I've done it a number of times because they're actually kinda of hard to spot. Um, and you really almost have to be looking specifically for them in a lot of cases. Okay. Okay, I found one. Uh, if you notice right here, you'll if you look really, really close, you're going to notice that the sand here is a bit different than the sand over here. And what this is, this is ghost sand. And if we try to run over this, we're going to fall right through it. It's basically a mirage block. Um, they're not super common, but if you come across these, be prepared for a bit of a nasty surprise because right down here, there's going to be an antlion trove guardian. And you'll notice that there is a chest down here. And speaking of antlions, just as a side note, these guys are really, really cool. If you've never played with them, they are, in like in real life, they are actually really fascinating creatures. But uh, they are hiding down here and they will devour you uh, if you're not careful. So very, very easy to miss that um, unless you're really, really looking for it, really paying attention. Uh, then it's most likely that you're not going to notice it and you're going to go right down inside that uh, to the antlion below. So Now next up we're going to pop over to the fungal forest. Uh, this is one of my personal favorite biomes and it's pretty much filled with mushrooms. Um, you'll notice the dark cap mushrooms, regular mushrooms, sarcastic jack mushrooms, uh, and then brown mushrooms, and then there's like these high cap mushrooms. There's a lot of mushroom variety. Um, you'll also notice these right here, you notice that just grow. These are glowstream stalks. They will grow downwards from the ceiling um, at a pretty decent rate. Um, you will also notice there is moss growing here. You can find moss in a few other places uh, within the Erebus, but there is also mold. And mold is unique only to this biome. Um, and it will be useful. We'll talk about why a bit later, but it is pretty useful stuff. Um, as far as mobs go, um, you will find these zombie ants. You'll find both regular and soldiers. Uh, these guys are pretty nasty, and they are pretty much the only source for zombie ant plates. These right here. Um, by killing the zombie ants. And if I recall correctly, I believe they only spawn in this biome. And then in addition, you will find uh, these kind of these rotted wood logs. And you'll also find this one actually isn't the best example. It's not very large, but it looks like we have a little bit more over here. Okay, here we go. You'll also find these right here, kind of these stumps. And there's a chance that whenever you find these, uh, these stumps, None in this one, but you may occasionally find one that has a jumping spider spawner in it, and there will be uh, some loot inside. So just kind of bear that in mind. It's not super common, but uh, on occasion you may come across those as you're running across uh, this biome. Now in addition, you will find, uh, if I recall, the only non-kind of insectoid creatures, you will find these little mushroom, uh, these little mushroom people, <laughs> these little mushroom creatures. That spawned. There was a brown one. I oh, must despawn, but uh, you'll you'll find a couple varieties of these guys, um, and they're basically just little mushroom guys. So kind of remind me of uh, whenever I see them, I always think of Dark Souls, the little mushroom men. Yeah, there's a brown one right there. 
Um, also, this biome is the site of the last boss, this guy right here actually, the Crush Room, which we're going to talk a little bit more about him um, when we cover the bosses. So he's pretty straightforward, but just know that he does occasionally spawn within this biome. Now, since we're right over next to it, let's go through here. And we're going to come out in the ulterior outback, which is this place, this area right in here. Um, not too much really to talk about within this biome. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Not going to be a lot of plant life. You will notice a few trees around here. Uh, and this one's actually pretty, pretty large, uh, which is nice. You will find these fire blooms. And over here is actually one of the examples of the tarantula broodmother uh, that I was talking about earlier. So uh, you'll note that she can spawn here as well as the savannas. Um, and this is one of her uh, spawn dungeons, which we'll talk a bit more about later. There's another one right over there. Huh. So be on the lookout for these. And also bear in mind that this biome is extremely dangerous, kind of like the uh, the desert. This place is really nasty. You're going to see things like scorpions, tarantulas, really not much in the way of passive mobs overall. Uh, rhinoceros beetles are kind of one of the exceptions. And you'll also see cytodes, which are like these big spider type creatures. Uh, there are going to be flies uh, that spawn around here. And uh, those solitudes or solifuges, not, I'm thinking of Skyrim. <laughs> Uh, they'll spawn here, and in addition, you will find uh, these right here. These are dung piles. Uh, you'll see these in a few other um, biomes, but these, basically, they just spawn flies. And down below here, you will find a chest um, that you can loot for just kind of some general loot. You'll notice a couple more spawners down here uh, spawning flies as well. But overall, very nasty place. Um, also, wasps. We'll be able to spawn here as well. So pretty straightforward. Also, I'm going to take a quick moment to mention these. You will come across these fairly often, eh, fairly uncommonly, I should say, uh, within the Erebus. And you'll see these spots of kind of webbed umber, umber cobble, mossy umber cobble, and umber cobble. And these are basically the Erebus's version of kind of the vanilla Minecraft's dungeon, right? So in the middle, there's going to be a spawner. Uh, in this case, it's jumping spiders. And you will be able to find a chest, a little bit of loot. This one is excessively bad, actually, um, within these dungeons. Sometimes they'll spawn in very visible places like this, whereas generally the vanilla Minecraft dungeons are usually pretty deep underground. Um, these will sometimes spawn on the sides of cliff faces and things. Uh, yeah, there's another one, actually, right here. So let's see if this chest is a bit better. Uh, it's not that great, but... Um, once again, another jumping spider spawner inside of there. Now, next up, we have the Elysian Fields. Absolutely love this biome. Um, it's just, it's always been up there is one of my favorites. Um, it's just kind of a grassy, really lush and vibrant area. And it's also the spot, the biome, that you're going to be finding these large flowers. Um, and there is a, there is a fairly large variety of these. Um, you'll notice black, red, brown, blue, purple, cyan, light gray, gray, pink, yellow, light blue, magenta, orange, white, and rainbow. Not all 16 colors are present. Uh, of course, there's no greens and stuff like that because uh, the stem pretty much makes up for that. It would be a rather bland flower if it was green. Um, but there are rainbow flowers as well. We're going to talk a bit more about these flowers a bit later. They are super important uh, to some other mechanics. Uh, so just kind of keep these in mind for right now. But like I said, we will talk about these a bit later. Now, in addition, this biome is actually, there are still quite a few hostile mobs, but overall, you tend to be a bit safer going through here than something like uh, the ulterior outback or the desert. I tend to like setting up in this biome if I'm setting up a base, uh, especially like a forward base or starter base, because uh, you have a lot of space. It's not like the jungle where it's really crowded. Um, and it's also just a nice pretty area uh, with some nice trees. There is a chance that you may come across a forest version of this biome 
where it's just a bit more dense as far as trees go and there's a few other tree types uh, that you'll encounter within that but it's not super common um, and if I recall the only other tree really is a the birch tree I think that spawns um, but it is a bit more forested now next up right over here we have the submerged swamp biome and this is pretty much where all your water is going to be um, is within the submerged swamp you will notice these guys right here these are bog moths um, I want to go ahead and actually mention these because they do drop bog moth root um, and I really just want to mention that because it's going to come up it does come up in tails but I wanted to make special mention of that because these plants only spawn in the uh, submerged swamps and since I am doing this kind of tutorials these tutorials to kind of go alongside tails in a way um, I do want to make mention of these also these guys right here are one of my favorite mobs uh, these are glow shrooms so if you watch my old project ozone 2 uh, series we had a pet glow worm on there they make really cool sounds and they're just really cool passive creatures um, to kind of keep around but the submerged swamp is filled with these large waterways and sometimes it's a pain to get out um, of these areas because there is these high cliffs and stuff that run around it but of course you can use the vines uh, that run along the walls here to kind of climb your way up out of here um, this is also the place where the majority of your flora is going to be able to be found uh, so things like sugar canes and bulrushes and ferns and um, lily pads and vines and fiddleheads and swamp plants there's just a lot of uh, plant variety uh, within this biome and in addition you're gonna see a lot of just kind of the general mobs um, that you would expect to be here things like pond skates and dragonflies and and leeches and mosquitoes stuff like that that you would kind of expect to be around a swamp that's what you're gonna be finding here uh, you will notice that there is quicksand within this uh, within this biome as well and yeah, there's mosquitoes and you'll also notice sundew here um, which if you are familiar with the between lands you're gonna be pretty familiar with the sundew and actually a lot of the plants and uh, a variety of the items and stuff that you find within the Erebus uh, so things like magma crawler eyes are really kind of similar in uh, the way that they look to stalker eyes which aren't yet implemented in the between lands but you will notice them in like JEI and stuff pretty similar and actually a lot of the plants and stuff kind of share some similarity to the between lands and there's a good reason for that so for those of you that don't know and there's pond skates by the way kind of cool looking uh, creatures but um, for those of you that don't know Vadis is uh, is the creator of the Erebus and he is also one of the devs for the Between Lands. So, which I always, I loved that so much because I've always been a huge Erebus fan. And the fact that the Erebus dev, which is the dev for one of my three favorite Dimension Mods ever, is also a dev for my favorite Dimension Mod ever. <laughs> and also I will mention there are berry bushes that spawn here. The Heartberry, Swampberry. We're going to talk a bit more about those. Um, a bit later on but uh, might as well go ahead and mention those okay there's what we're looking for and you'll notice a few more trees over here um, with the marsh wood trees um, but over here this is a lily pad you'll notice the dragonfly spawner that sits on top of it and down below here if we kind of come in right here uh, break through one of these dragonfly spawners at least um, you're going to notice there is a chest down here um, that you can loot. So I just kind of wanted to mention that small little structure uh, that spawns down here. And then last up we have the Petrified Forest. Now this biome is also one of my favorites. Uh, just very, very unique and it does come with some really unique building materials in the petrified wood, the volcanic rock, um, as well as this petrified wood and then the dust that spawns here um, just kind of a unique 
really interesting uh, biome. There's actually not a lot of mobs that you're going to see spawning here. Just kind of more like the general mobs. You'll notice some flies and things that may spawn. Uh, occasionally some spiders that will spawn. But overall, they're not too common. Yeah, there's a fly that spawned up. Um, but overall, mobs aren't as common within this biome as a lot of the other biomes. Um, there's just not as many mob types that spawn and just not as many mobs that tend to spawn um, because this is kind of just like a dead area. So you kind of don't expect much beyond just spiders and flies and other nasty sorts of things. And you will notice, by the way, there is different shades of the petrified wood. Um, so if we look up, for example, petrified wood, you're going to notice a few different shades here. Uh, so just kind of bear that in mind. If you're building something, want to use that. It's a really cool building material um, because of that fact. Also worth noting is this stuff right here. You're going to see lakes of this stuff. And it's only present within the petrified forest. And this is formic acid. If you jump into this, you're going to take damage. So when you're traversing this area, just kind of keep an eye out for those. Um, they're pretty hard to miss, but it's not water. <laughs> it's not water. So don't go jumping in that. It will uh, actually do a decent amount of damage to you. And uh, it's pretty easy to avoid, so I would just advise avoiding it. Um, but yeah, aside from that, there's really not too much. You will see uh, mandrake root that's growing around here. We're going to talk a little bit more about mandrake root a bit later on. But uh, for the most part, this biome is usually pretty barren. You're not going to find a whole lot of stuff uh, spawning within here and uh, when you do like I said it's generally just flies and things so anyways that pretty much covers our basic general Erebus overview that just kind of gets all the biomes out there uh, next episode we'll start diving into some more specifics um, of the mod so we'll be covering of course bosses um, animal taming we'll be covering plants and kind of special agricultural things um, for example, Erebus features its own brewing system, so we're going to talk about that. Gear and special tools, and just uh, there's actually a lot within this mod that, like I said, is generally, I think, overlooked um, and kind of forgotten about um, by both pack devs and players. So I kind of want to get this out here and, uh, and go through it in depth like we have the other mods. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this first episode. And if you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already. Stay up to date with when new videos come out. And so you stay up to date with when the next episode of the Erebus tutorial comes out. So anyways, I hope to see you guys next time. Until then, as always, do take care, stay safe. I'll see you guys then.